What's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I want to welcome you guys to a new video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my keto and Invisalign journey. Um, a lot of people have been hitting me up about these two topics and I've decided to put both of them inside of one video because it's going to make a lot of sense once we get into the groove of things. Um, the main thing is I've done keto and Invisalign just to better my life and feel more comfortable in my own skin. If you are out there and you feel like you're not comfortable with the way you look or anything like that, I'm not going to say that you have to uh, actually go out and get surgery or something like that or dive deep into, into depression. Just make small changes to yourself so that you know that you are healthy. The number one thing out there is that you are healthy, you can live a long life, and you can be comfortable in your own skin with that. A lot of people out there, they say to themselves when they look in the mirror, this isn't right about myself. That isn't right about myself. Well, look, there's videos on YouTube like this one that can help you with starting a journey and getting better in those things that you may feel like you lack or anything like that. But just know that you are beautiful, okay? But let's go ahead and hop into the video, man. <laughs> So, first things first, a lot of people want to know about my Invisalign. A lot of people say, yo, iPod, we noticed that, you know, you have these things in your mouth and, you know, once somebody gets close up on you, they always ask you that question like, yo, yo, what's that? Oh, they always tell them, oh, they're liners. And people say, oh, so there's something like braces. And I'm like, yeah, there's something like braces. But, you know, with me doing YouTube and stuff like that, I didn't want to get the braces because... I'm 30. I don't have time to be all up in between braces, wearing retainers and all that. So I have the clear liners and they're super simple, bro. Literally, I eat, I wait 20 minutes and within that 20 minutes, I'm drinking water. I brush or floss and then I put my liners back in and I do that every single day and I wear them overnight when I'm asleep. It's super duper easy, bro. A lot of people have had um, videos where they say their liners hurt their teeth, a liner scratched their gums, a liner scratched the inside of their mouths. I can tell you for sure, the only time that my aligner hurts is when I put it in for the first time if I'm moving on to a new set. Other than that, they never scratch my gums. They've never scratched the inside of my mouth, and I use an accelerant so that I can speed up the process. I was supposed to have Invisalign for two years. It's not even been a year yet, and I only have three trays left. So when it comes to having a perfect smile, as they would say, I would say that my smile has come a long way. When I smile, a lot of people feel like I'm lighting up a room. It's funny because when I went to Thanksgiving last year or Christmas, it was one of those holidays, and I seen my family, a lot of people was like, whoa, what's what's going on with you? What, what What's in your mouth? And I'm like... I'm like, what are you talking about? There's like, yo, we noticed that, you know, your teeth are whiter. Um, your teeth don't have gaps in them like they used to. Like, if I put a picture on screen of the way my teeth used to look to how they look now, you guys would even say it's a drastic change. But I'm not going to do that because no need. You've seen my journey. You know that I've gotten a tooth taken out and everything like that. But a lot of people want to know, how does keto go into my Invisalign journey? So when it comes to keto... Basically, I cut out almost all the carbs that I take in during the day. And that basically means I had to switch up my energy source, which means I had to use fat. Now, if you're one of those people that are big on carnivore type of eating, eating a lot of beef and chicken and stuff like that, then the keto lifestyle won't really be for you because you'll still be breaking down all of that meat into glycogen. So what I had to do is I had to take in more fat, which means I had to cook my food with avocado or olive oil or uh, coconut oil. I have to eat a lot of eggs, a lot of greens. Um, I tend to lean more towards fish as my protein. Um, I used to be heavy on the bacon, bro, like super duper heavy on the bacon, but I ended up hitting a plateau and a plateau is basically something where you get there. And it's like you're at a halt and you're trying to figure out like, yo, how do I keep going? And basically when I hit that plateau, I was like, something's off. Every morning I would wake up, I would eat three eggs and four strips of bacon, right? Then midday I was eating uh, chicken 
and uh, like baby spinach inside of a, a taco, which was a carb balanced shell. Then for dinner, I was probably having salmon with broccoli and cauliflower. And I was eating this around the clock. Now I lost like 35 pounds and then I hit that plateau and I was like, yo, like what's going on? I'm eating the same things. But once your body gets used to eating the same thing, it's like, yo, bro, you've, you've lost all the weight you could possibly lose without working out and without working out because of my busted shoulder and elbows. I just was like, you know what? Let me try something different. So recently, I've switched up the way I eat. I'm no longer eating pork on my keto diet, mainly because I want to see where I can go from here. And within me taking out the pork, I've lost nine more pounds. So that means for the last week and a half, I haven't had my daily pork intake, which means I've lost nine extra pounds as a result of that. I still have the eggs and baby spinach in the morning. Um, I've actually cut out my midday meal, which I will get into fasting in a moment. I cut out my midday meal and I just eat dinner after that. If I'm eating breakfast, I'm going to eat breakfast at nine and then I'm not going to eat again till seven. So let's talk about fasting for a moment. As far as keto, if you want to figure out what foods you need to eat, you can easily Google them here. I'm not one of those YouTube channels that's going to give you guys a whole diet and everything like that. I'm going to tell you about my experience and what I've ate and then you go from there. But as far as fasting goes, I tried the intermittent fasting. I did the 16 to 8 where I would eat within the 8-hour window, whether that window be from 12 to uh, 8 or whether that window be from 12, I mean from uh, 9 to about 5 in the afternoon. I tried all of that. I even tried the OMAD fasting where I only eat within one hour window. The one hour window of eating is really, really hard, but it makes you lose the most weight the fastest. A lot of people will attribute this to starving yourself. Now, the reason why a lot of people say that starving yourself is because they'll say, oh, well, what are you doing for the other uh, 23 hours out of the day? I'm literally sleeping six to eight hours out of that, and I'm drinking water for the rest. So when I wake up in the morning, I guzzle down a bottle of water. Then I will just drink one water every hour on an hour. And, or every two hours until it was time for me to eat. Whenever I felt that hunger pain or whatever the case may be, I made sure that I drank two bottles of water within that window because it's basically you just trying to surpass that window. Also, Himalayan pink salt is great to put in your water if you are doing that that uh, OMAD fast. If you're doing intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting shouldn't be that hard on the body because you'll be able to eat eight hours out of the day, you'll be able to eat once, twice, or even three times within that eight hour window. But OMAD fast was crazy. I was eating eggs, bacon, and spinach at 7 p.m. Then at 7.30, I would start cooking my dinner meal, which was salmon, broccoli, and cauliflower. Then I would eat that at like 7.55. And I would finish it all by like 8, 8.05. And then I wouldn't eat again until seven o'clock the next day. I only did that for about a week and a half, but it was dope though, because within that um, week and a half, um, I had like a doctor visit coming up and I was at the point where I was like plateauing and I was like, darn, um, how am I going to go into my doctor's visit? And prior to, you know, the year before they were like, Hey, you want to watch out? You may be pre-diabetic. You want to make sure you bring that carb intake down, that sugar intake down. And I was coming up on that meeting and I was around two, 233, um, 233 pounds. And I went into my doctor's visit at 224 and all of my levels had dropped. No longer pre-diabetic. Um, also, my cholesterol levels was not raised at all. Everything about me physically, except for the uh, body fat, was great. You know what I mean? I, I still do have a little bit of shoulder pain and elbow pain, but that's like arthritis and stuff like that. And from me working at a strenuous job for so many years, um, because I started working at the airport when I was 17. And, you know, when you young, you can just put your body through whatever. But as the years caught up with me, now I'm 30, my elbows start to hurt sometimes because of the way I used to throw bags. Um, my shoulder hurts sometimes from the way I used to throw bags. So, you know, you just have to take care of your body over time. But back to the fasting, right? So now that I'm fasting, I'm back to intermittent fasting, which is 16 to 8. Like uh, earlier this morning around, I would say, 930, I had eggs and baby spinach. So now um, my wife took out salmon. 
Um, I'll be having salmon and broccoli uh, and cauliflower tonight at seven, which is which is huge. And as far as working out goes, I just walk and I just make sure that I get at least ten thousand steps in a day. Do that in a way to fall right off. Um, I've had people come to me that were three hundred plus pounds. Uh, some people was even like 412 pounds. They hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that, and told me that they started the keto journey like myself and have had amazing results. People told, told me that they lost like 47 pounds in like eight weeks. A lot of people came up to me and was like, yo, bro, they came to my stream saying, bro, what you gave me, the, the, the actual info on this keto diet, and I started it, everything changed. Everything started out you know, slow, they was trying to cut out the, the soda, the sugar water, the drinks, you know, the juice and all that, but once they cut all that out, start drinking water regularly, and then they start cutting out the honey buns, the oatmeal cream pies, the cookies, the, the candy, they start cutting all that out, and then they start saying, hey, you know what, I can do this, so then they start cutting out the bread, they start cutting out the potatoes, and then they say, whoa, I can, I can cut out a little bit of fruit here. And then they went on full-blown keto. People started getting into ketosis and started losing weight. And it's, it really makes me happy to hear those type of stories because, bro, I play video games all day long. If I'm not playing my game, I'm spending time with my wife, my kids, or I may work like once or twice a month. But other than that, bro, I'm sitting in a chair like I'm sitting in right now, playing a game for hours. And back then, I used to have chips, honey buns, oatmeal cream pies, uh, maybe some brownies, uh, definitely some uh, Lipton tea, some pink lemonade, uh, simply lemonade. I had, I had it all. If you guys think that I wasn't out here going crazy, I was out here going crazy. I was almost two hundred and seventy pounds, bro. Like it, it was definitely getting crazy. Like you know, what I'm saying I put a pic, a picture up on Twitter and Instagram, I think, of like my journey from my wedding, which was in 2017, to where I am now. And I've lost a lot of weight. It may not be a lot of weight to other people, but 40 plus pounds is a lot of weight. Some people even said when I came back to work for the first time after my keto journey, they was like, yo, Carter, what the hell happened to you? You know what I'm saying? Because, of course, as black people, you know, we always ask stupid questions like, yo, you on drugs? You know what I'm saying? What happened to you? Oh, he must have got that surgery, that surgery. A lot of people know what that means when they say that surgery. I think it's like a gastric bypass or they put that, that clamp on your stomach or something like that, where you you take in less food or something like that. I didn't do none of that. I just went on keto, cut the carbs out, and now I actually sweat, you know what I mean? Because I don't have fat cells storing all the fat within my body, you feel me? But um, as far as my Invisalign and keto journey, that's really it, man. I have three trays left on Invisalign. Uh, my, my smile came a long way. Um, I ended up getting a tooth pulled on my bottom row and then they had to move everything inward i still do have my molars if anybody wants to know about that my wisdom teeth and all that are still there so that's that's a good thing i guess it's because my mouth is big enough to fit all four of those teeth which is which is cool but um i don't have a midline anymore on my bottom row i still have a midline on my top which is supposed to line up with your nose and your mouth you know what i'm saying so that's still there but as far as my bottom row my midline has a tooth there, but you guys really wouldn't tell unless I really told you, or if you're a dentist or something like that, or you're somebody that loves looking at teeth, you know what I mean? <laughs> You'll be able to notice that. But um, as far as keto, if you're not on it and you feel like you want to do get on it, um, hit me up inside the comment section. You know, Let me know where you are, where you want to start, and I will have that rapport with you in the comment section. I will be replying to all the comments that I can to help people out on their journey if they want to start. If you're one of those people that are thinking about braces or aligners and stuff like that, I say go with these if you have a very strong mental and uh, regimen. Like um, some people would say, since I'm a Virgo, I have a little bit of OCD. Um, if you ask like Agent Davis, Duke, and um, like, you know, Ricky Chase, like when I stay with people, when I'm traveling and stuff like that, I am very like organized and stuff like that. I don't like leaving stuff laying around. And But I don't think that I have OCD. I just feel like I'm a person that wants to be clean and wants to be organized. And that's, that's it. That's all that I can say about myself. But if you do want to get um aligners, you got to be one of those people that are willing to floss, willing to brush your teeth, 
Okay, you hear what I'm saying? Willing to brush your teeth, floss, use the mouthwash, teeth whitener, stuff like that. You want to keep your hygiene right, okay? But um, I'm going to holler at you guys in the next video. Hope you guys do hit that like button, man. It helps me. It helps uh, the channel a lot. And uh, I will see y'all in the next video, man. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.